Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I have an absolutely insane match for you. It really comes right down to it. One of the most fun matches I've had in a while. And listen, I've been a great Tusk denier for some time, but honestly, today kind of changed my mind. This thing is absolutely the greatest paradox. Looking at my opponent's team, they have one of the scariest looking Sun teams ever. And uh, that's gonna be, that's gonna be fun. You know what would also be fun? If this video was sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. And I've got good news for you. It is. Raid Shadow Legends is a completely free to play mobile RPG with millions of players and over 80 million downloads. It's got over 800 completely unique champions and billions of ways to customize. Plus my favorite part is the graphics literally look like you're playing on a PC game. So look, it's Halloween season and Raid has a ton of Halloween champions to choose from. And I decided we're gonna play a little game I like to call Kiss Mary Kill. I'm gonna choose three of the Halloween champions and we'll see how it goes. Alright, so the kiss is the most obvious one. I'm going with Madame Sarah. She's an epic champion in the Dark Elves faction, and she's got a pretty sweet witchy vibe going on, and uh, I'm into it. I mean, who isn't, right? Next up, Mary is a tough one. I'm going with Siffy the Lost Bride. She is not lost anymore. She's you know, pretty spooky looking, but I think I can look past it, and uh, we can make it work, for sure. And finally, we've got Kill. I'm going with Harvest Jack. This dude seems like an absolute liability to have around. He's one of the most badass looking ones, but he just seems like he could do he, he could do some bad in the world. And uh, I mean, he has heads on him, so I will avenge whoever those people are. Hey, and if you like free stuff, I got some good news for you. If you log in on seven different days between now and October 23rd, you can actually get a legendary champion. It's Sun Wukong. It's Raid's take on the Chinese mythology, and this has got to be one of my favorite champions in the game. This thing is amazing. You definitely do not want to miss out on this bad boy. So if you haven't downloaded Raid already, what are you doing? Living under a rock? Go ahead and download it using the QR code on my screen or in the link in the description. Grab yourself the bonus champion, Talia. And once you're in, crushing some enemies, come find me under the name Hayden, the same as my YouTube username. And if you're fast enough, you can join my clan. And I will see you guys on the battlefield. So let's get it. My opponent is going to lead off with their futuristic ass pointy Dorito Volcarona as I decide to toss out uh, the Torterra. So honestly, Iron Moth is one of the scarier Pokemon in the meta right now. And Torterra wants absolutely none of this. It's actually also even going to activate its Quark Drive with the booster energy. And with a speed boost, this thing was already scary before and now it's just an absolute threat. But luckily, I do have my Lotic. The DLC has blessed us with giving back Mommy Cynthia's Milotic, and finally, uh, I, have a, I have a good answer for this thing at least. So, I can bring this in on the Fiery Dance, and I do take this pretty nicely because obviously, I'm the bulkiest Serpentini you've ever damn seen. And I'm actually positioned pretty well to check this thing. I'm kind of specially defensive Milotic, uh, plus I know I can do like at least half with a Scald, and uh, I don't imagine they kind of switch out here, because they do want to probably get some chip uh, off on the Milotic, because it's a bit of a wall to their team. So, I'm just gonna go for a Scald here, I definitely need some damage off on this thing. As they stay in and do try to get some chip, they go for that sludge wave. And I actually take that extremely nicely, where my Scald actually knocks them down to half and next one's pretty much guaranteed to kill. So uh, I'm in a pretty good spot here and I kind of, I do want to conserve my low tick because, you know, they have Pokemon like the Ogre Pond in the back. And I'm going to end up going for the Recover, considering maybe they switch. If they don't, I can actually get more HP back than they do to me. So they actually just stay in, they go for that sludge wave, and I recover back a ton of HP. And um, this is why my low take is actually the GOAT. You know, it sucks to play against, but uh, bulky water boy having on your side is amazing. So, uh, after some leftovers, I'm sitting like really healthy. And now at this point, I have no reason not to just go for another Scald. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here, as they don't really have a lot that wants to switch into the Milo tick. Uh, so, it does knock me down to about half to finish the matchup, but I'm just happy to see uh, the Moth gone, to be honest. Being swept by that thing... No bueno. So, now they can switch into whatever they want against the Milotic. And I'm sitting at about half, knowing that my fate is basically going to be getting bopped by an Ogre Pond. So, the Ogre Pond does come in here. So, uh, the, the sneaky little situation about this thing is, it, you know, it gets stabbed with the uh, fire, gets stabbed grass, and it just kind of depends on what this thing is uh, running. So, it actually ends up going for the Power Whip and misses, which is absolutely amazing because that definitely would have killed me. Uh, I have to stay in. The reason is, literally nothing can switch into Ogre Pond Hearth Flame. And this battle actually happened before this thing was actually banned, so... Uh, it's interesting to, to play against this Mon, because literally I have pretty much nothing on my team that wants to deal with it. So, uh, I just decided to stay in here again. It does finish me off with a Power Whip, which, you know, is unfortunate, but... I was kind of weighing the cost, and my low tick going down was kind of the best thing for me at this point, because now I can get in a free switch. And the way I've been kind of dealing with these things is basically... 
uh, getting up the reflect. So I go into the Grim Snarl. This thing is going to be light clay. Uh, with the Prankster ability, I can get that reflect up before it attacks, and that's exactly what I need to do. If I'm going to have any chance of taking attacks from this thing, especially one that uh, is based around a Sun team, uh, I need that reflect. So the Ivy Cudgel is actually going to knock me not even to half, which is amazing. So this allows me to also set up the light screen because it's always good to have you know a couple dual screens around. So that's exactly what I do. And now Ogre Pond decides, okay, this is nonsense, and goes for the Swords Dance, which is again extremely scary. So this thing is at plus two, and at this point I have my reflect up. But now I'm thinking if I can get the Parting Shot, you know, drop its attack, uh, and then switch into Hisuian Arcanine, I actually can then force this thing out. So. I go for that parting shot, drop its attack, it's now sitting at plus one. And, you know, it's still at least behind the reflect. The sun is not technically up yet, uh, so I can actually have that dude Clifford come in here and, uh, and take an attack. So, the former alpha comes in straight from my Legends Arceus, and he's actually going to end up taking an Ivy Cudgel amazingly. That doesn't do a lot, and now I can kind of uh, scare this thing out. You know, the bad news is they do have switch-ins uh, to Hisuian Arcanine, but I really just needed to... Kind of put some pressure here. So I go for that Flutter Blitz as they end up switching into Great Tusk, which I do not really have an answer for this. He kind of just walls the Suvian Arcanine. But I go for that Flutter Blitz and it actually ends up getting the burn, which is amazing. Great Tusk is a mon that hits extremely hard. And, you know, it, at least behind the Reflect and with this thing burnt, I'm, uh, I'm feeling pretty safe here. Although I can't really stay in and go for another Flutter Blitz. It's just not doing enough chip. Uh, and I do want to conserve Choice Scarf Hisuian Arcanine for that... Uh, for potentially for saving it for that uh, that ogre pond later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch into the Blood Moon Ursa Luna, baby. It's cocaine bear time. This thing is bulky enough, uh, especially behind the reflect and that thing being burnt, that I felt safe here. So uh, they actually surprisingly end up switching, and they're going to bring in the Torkoal. They want to get that sun up. It's the middle of the damn night out here, but somehow now there's, you know, some sunbeams, which, you know, my moon bear does not appreciate, but what he does appreciate is just getting up some damage. So what I'm going to do here is... I just go straight for the Earth Power. There's not a lot on their team that wants to take it. And, uh, you know, a stab Earth Power coming from Blood Moon Ursa Luna is going to do a lot to anything. Literally, it's another Pokemon that is really hard to switch into. I wouldn't doubt if this thing gets banned soon as well. It's honestly insane. So, Great Tusk comes in, does get a Protosynthesis attack boost, but also does get served a nice little uh, platter full of death. As, you know, the Earth Power does take it out. Uh, with that thing being burnt, it was kind of uh, an obvious sack there, as now they can bring in... The walking wig. This thing also gets its protosynthesis and it's gonna boost its special attack which is not good because you know I'm a ground type so I'm basically forced to go for the Terra. I essentially just want to lose my ground type uh, to be able to take a neutral Hydro Steam and then fire off a Blood Moon at it. So uh, they're actually gonna end up going for the Terra themselves. Now they go for Terra Water. This thing has special attack boost and a Hydro Steam in the Sun is kind of unfathomable damage but I'm actually max HP Ursa Luna and I'm feeling like I should be able to take it, but just barely, and I think it might even be a roll. So, I put the old fist on my head and just kind of hope for the best here, because honestly, uh, you know, Walking Wake is really scary for my team. So, they go for that Hydro Steam. The sun is up, the Terra is there, and it all comes down to Ursa Luna. I'm able to live it with 18 HP, which is insane, so I was basically forced to use my Terra there to not be weak to that. And I can fire off a Blood Moon in return, which doesn't quite knock this thing out, uh, but it basically puts it in range to then yeah, get knocked out to a Vacuum Wave, because whatever sicko at Game Freak decided to give Ursa Luna freaking priority is, uh, is my enemy. But when I'm using it, it's fine. I go for that Vacuum Wave, does finish off the Walking Wake, and that is truly like the biggest threat against my team, and I kind of needed to use everything I could uh, to be able to take an attack from that thing. So, down goes the Wake. And we're feeling pretty good over here. You know, Ursa Luna's not really, because kind of anything just kills me at this point, and I don't have a, I don't have a ton to switch into. So they're gonna revenge switch into the Ogre Pond again. Very scary mon, and I don't really have much to do to this thing, especially in the sun. Uh, and an Ivy Cudgel is definitely gonna just absolutely butt my shit out of existence. So uh, it's gonna, I'm gonna go for that Vacuum Wave, basically just to get a little bit last of last chip before I go down. Uh, so they're down to three Pokemon left, but the secret weapon in my back pocket is the Great Tusk, because especially in the sun, I can actually activate my own Protosynthesis. So what happens here is I go down to that Ivy Cudgel, uh, and that is fine. Honestly, Blood Moon did exactly what it needed to do this match, and that was kind of uh, 1v1 that, uh, that walking wake. So the light screen and the reflect are now gone. So basically what I need to do in order to be able to take on this thing on is <laughs> get that screen back up, and Grimmsnarl comes in. Honestly, Grimmsnarl's usage right now, it's like never used. This thing is 
so nice with that prankster. Uh, it, on, in, especially in a meta like this, it's it, it's super nice. So I go for that reflect. Um, he's gonna end up going for the swords dance. Um, I think actually in the sun an ivy cudgel could take me out there, but you know this thing is extremely scary now with the swords dance at least. So it does go for that ivy cudgel with the plus two in the sun that does take care of me. Uh, but at least I was able to get my reflect up. So uh, now I get a switch into whatever I like, and that is gonna end up being the uh, Hisuian Arcanite, of course. I know that I am faster with the Choice Scarf. They don't know that I'm Scarf at this point. Um, and I can just go for that Flare Blitz in the sun. It should be enough to take this thing out. So that's exactly what I do. I bring in old Stone Boy, and I'm going to go for that Flare Blitz. With that Rockhead ability, we don't take Recoil. This thing is an absolute beast. So they actually end up switching out the Ogre Pond. They're going to bring back in the Torkoal, uh, who, of course, has a decent matchup um, against the, the Flare Blitz here. Had I gone for the Head Smash, it would have been a 2 at KO. Uh, but this thing comes in and just takes that nicely. But now, the sun actually goes away, which is super important. Keeping in mind, they have a Roaring Moon in the back. Uh, with the Protosynthesis, they're kind of relying on that being their win condition, and it's looking like it might just be. Uh, so I decide to switch into the Great Tusk here. My plan is essentially to try to finish the game off with young Larry out here. We come in, Tusk's looking mighty, and uh, we come in on a Flamethrower. Luckily, not in the sun, so I can actually take two, uh, which is super important. And this is actually the most important play. I'm gonna go for the Rapid Spin. Now the reason for that is, even though they don't have any Stealth Rocks on their side of the field, what I can do is Rapid Spin to get a speed boost. That puts me at plus one, and I know that at plus one, I'm actually not gonna be able to outspeed uh, the Roaring Moon in the back. But they go for the Flamethrower once more. Luckily I do not get burnt, and now I can finish this thing off with an Earthquake. But they know that they need the Sun to stay up for their Roaring Moon, so they're actually gonna end up switching out and they go into Ogre Pond essentially for the sack here. So uh, super satisfying to see that thing go down. And again, I'm at plus one, but I also have Protosynthesis of my own. Uh, so the plan with that Rapid Spin was essentially to give myself a base speed boost uh, so that I'm at plus two when the sun goes up again. So they bring back out the Torkoal, who is gonna set up that sun again, which then, boom, activates my Protosynthesis, and I am gonna get enough speed uh, to outspeed their Roaring Moon at this point. So the Rapid Spin against the No Stealth Rock is a risky maneuver, but sometimes you need that speed boost, and that's why Great Tusk is amazing. It has access to both Stealth Rock and Rapid Spin, and this thing is just always gonna be a threat. So, an Earthquake finishes off the Torkoal, and the last Pokemon is gonna be that Roaring Moon, who is extremely scary, especially with a Protosynthesis speed boost, uh, as it ordinarily would be faster than everything, but now I'm at plus two. And I can finish this thing off with a nice little stab close combat because we throw in tusks out here, baby. And we don't throw hands. Nothing but tusks. So the, <laughs> the close combat is going to finish off the Roaring Moon, and that is going to be the end of the match. It was an uh, extremely close one. Honestly, that rapid spin play definitely sealed it for me. And uh, I had a lot of fun with that one. That dude's team was extremely scary, but uh, real fun to play again. So remember to leave a like on the video if you can. It really does help out the channel. And 